guys, I hope you're good. We've just had a massive thunderstorm, so I'm hoping that it has subsided for a little while because it was mega noisy. So yesterday I went to the cinema and I saw the film Dunkirk. If you like war films, then I thoroughly recommend going to see it. I, however, don't enjoy war films. The reason that I was so keen to go and see it was because it covered the subject of the evacuation of Dunkirk by the little ships. A quick history lesson if you don't know about what happened. Near the start of the Second World War there was a battle in Dunkirk which is in the north of France and the Germans basically forced the British, the French and the Canadian troops to retreat and the only place for them to go was to the beach at Dunkirk. There were about 400,000 men on the beach and they were basically just a second target for the German Air Force. So the British Army sent in some warships to evacuate the troops from the beaches. However, they weren't able to evacuate as many men as they would have liked to. For example, on the first day, they only managed to rescue about 7,000 and the British basically resigned themselves to the fact that Dunkirk was going to be a huge military loss. So because things were so desperate, the Navy came up with the idea to commandeer civilian boats, including yachts, leisure craft, lifeboats and Thames barges to go over to Dunkirk and help with the evacuation. And also the advantage of using these small boats was that they had um, a much lower draft, meaning that they could get really close to the beaches and the soldiers could wade out to them. They then either ferried the troops out to bigger ships or they took them back to England with them. So the code name for this was Operation Dynamo and in the end nearly 330,000 troops were saved and at the time it was hailed as a miracle and it was this event that inspired Churchill's famous speech to Parliament We shall fight them on the beaches I've heard a few claims that some narrowboats were used during Operation Dynamo Is this true? Are narrowboats actually seaworthy? Narrowboats are designed for non-tidal waters. Most have a draft of only two or three feet, which means that that is how much of the boat actually sits under the waterline. So because of this, in choppy waters, they will become really unstable. I've seen a load of videos of narrowboats on the tidal Thames, and it is absolutely terrifying to watch. Even on a calm day, the waves can be absolutely massive, but the scariest thing is the wash that is created from the bigger boats sharing the water. A bigger and faster boat going past you will throw up really big waves. Um, people who have been on the tidal Thames strongly recommend that you firmly secure your bow doors and the windows at the front because a lot of water can get in through there. So did narrowboats really cross the channel and take part in Operation Dynamo? There were around 400 civilian boats that did take part, but there is no evidence that any of them were narrow boats. So I think we can call that one an old wives' tale. However, in 2003, a narrow boat did cross the English Channel. A retired couple from Staffordshire in England decided that they needed a little bit more adventure in their life. So taking their whippet with them, they packed up their 60-foot narrowboat, Phyllis May, and headed for France. Terry and Monica Darlington, and Jim, cruised to Ramsgate in Kent, where they joined the English Channel and set off for Calais. Let's be clear, they didn't just wake up one day and say, oh, let's go to France. They'd owned the boat for seven years, and they took two years to plan this trip, seeking advice from maritime experts, who told them that they were suicidal. They modified the boat, covering the front doors and windows with steel and they also enlisted a pilot who was familiar with the route. They chose a very calm and sunny day to attempt the crossing. 
as they were setting off and they got to Whitstable, the Coast Guard came racing after them, but they assured him that they knew what they were doing by taking a boat designed for the English canals into one of the busiest shipping routes in the world. At one point, they got caught in the wash of a 40 foot high ferry, and Terry Darlington did admit that he feared the boat capsizing and that they would all die. Apart from that, he described the journey as great fun. Terry actually published a book about his experiences as well as two sequels, so I'm definitely going to have to get hold of a copy of those. It sounds like a fascinating story, they sound like really nice people. A little bit crackers, um, but mostly I'm just really glad that they didn't drown Jim. So the answer to the original question, are narrowboats seaworthy? On the right day, in the right conditions, with the right planning, a little bit of luck, and a hell of a lot of guts. Yes, narrow boats are seaworthy. Although I won't be trying it anytime soon. Thanks for watching, I make new videos at least once a week, so if you enjoyed that please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I will see you again very soon. Bye. Once he's moving my notes with his tail. Adoring fans, how cute you are. Come on, come on. Yeah. <laughs> hey, cutie pie. Where were we?